Hey guys, I just wanted to make another video for you. Uh, everyone really seemed to like my live data videos, so I figured I'd make another one for you. Um, I didn't go too much into detail um, with my last couple videos. I just pretty much gave you the basics on it, and I'm not going to go you know, too crazy into detail here. That just give you a better uh, understanding. When you understand the live data that you're, you know, reading, you can really get uh, good hints as to, you know, what's wrong or if everything's okay. You just want to kind of see how your engine's running. But um, so I broke up my last couple videos from short term to long term fuel trims and you know O2 sensor readings and everything else. But uh, you know, I was still getting a lot of questions, and if you do have any questions after I'm done, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll definitely get back to you when I see it. But um, so, pretty much your long term and your short term fuel trims. A lot of people think they can, you know, kind of get a, a close estimate of you know their air to fuel ratio on it, and that's wrong uh, because your short and long term fuel trims are, you know, just the amount of fuel the uh, ECU wants to see put into the engine with the um, air mixture. So that's pretty much all you see with that, you know, over a longer period of time, you know, how much fuel is getting injected into the engine versus the short term fuel trims, which is pretty much the corrections that it needs to see right this second. So uh, when you are reading short term fuel trims, you'll see them fluctuate a lot more. And right now mine's uh, pretty steady, but I'll get into that, you know, later why it's not really fluctuating around too much. But, um, so you want to see, you know, like I said before in all my other videos, you want to see uh, your numbers closest to zero, but you can see them, you know, at upwards of, uh, you know, 10 positive or negative. That's normal, but, you know, 10 is definitely on the higher end of the scale. You want to start, you know, looking into it, maybe, you know, why it's doing that. Positive readings mean it's adding fuel. Negative means it's taking fuel away. If you're getting fuel taken away, then... Um, you know, you could have a stuck open injector or something along those lines. And if uh, it's adding fuel, you know, you could have a, a vacuum leak or, you know, maybe one of your hoses got, you know, kinked or something along those lines. So uh, pretty much, you know, you want to see these readings right here are uh, half decent right now, 5.5, 4.7. That's not bad. Now you come down to the long-term fuel trims and uh, that's, oh, sorry camera went out of focus there let me get it back here but uh so your long-term fuel trims you want to see them you know pretty much staying the same you know mine's uh 6.3 and 9.4 right now uh 9.4 is definitely high i would walk into that but i already know the issue like i said uh, we'll get into that in a little bit but um so when you're reading all this data and you're trying to, you know, process what's going on. You want to look at your short-term fuel trims, your long-term fuel trims, and then how that corresponds to the oxygen sensors. So when you're reading oxygen sensors, it goes, I think the uh, maximum value you can see is uh, 1.27 uh, millivolts, or volts rather, and, um, you know, it'll fluctuate uh, 0.9 is on the more rich side of the scale, and point one is more on the lean side of the scale. So, you know, if your oxygens or if you have uh, an exhaust leak like what I'm experiencing now, why my fuel trims are higher, uh, you can see the oxygen sensor for uh, bank one, sensor one is uh, you know staying pretty much at uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and uh, the last one on the bottom of the screen there is pretty much the same. But if you look at the one in the middle. Um, bank one sensor two is just staying completely the same at uh, just 0 0.50 so or uh, 0 0.050 sorry but um, that's because I have an oxygen sensor right before where my uh, pipes broke at it broke right at the catalytic converter so it's not really getting exhaust flow through it so it's you know doesn't have no reading and when it does that, the car tends to run a bit more rich because, you know, it doesn't, a lean condition is a lot worse than a rich condition, which rich can still be bad, but um, it makes sure, you know, there's definitely enough fuel because there's what's called open and closed loop. When your engine's cold, 
and you're in open loop, you're just getting a preset air to fuel ratio straight from the ECU. And once your car's warmed up, if everything looks okay and the ECU says, yeah, you know, everything looks good, it'll start pulling the information directly from the oxygen sensors, and then it'll know how much air and fuel to put into the engine. So, uh, right now, mine won't go into closed loop because it's seeing that second oxygen sensor on bank one isn't reading anything. So it pretty much thinks the sensor is dead right now. So it's just, uh, you know, like the second fuel trim right there, the long term, is just steady 9.4. Now that's a bit high. But like I said, it, uh, it's uh, definitely, you know, compensate and make sure it definitely has enough fuel going into the engine. So when you're reading oxygen sensors, uh, we'll focus on just bank one, sensor one. Um, you know, it's 0 0.85 right now, 86. But um, when you're looking at that, you want to kind of just rev the engine up a little bit and see what it does. You should see, and you can even put this in a uh, waveform, which I'll do here in a minute, but you can actually see and you should see it fluctuate uh, from, you know, the higher end of the scale, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, all the way down to, you know, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. And, uh, you know, when you first step on the gas pedal, it's going to inject more fuel into there. Once you let off, it cuts fuel back so you should see it go lean so you should see it high first and then low and then it'll kind of even out a little bit and then it'll go back to you know on, up on the higher scale so when you're just sitting at idle you know it's pretty much just dumping the same amount of fuel in so you won't see too many fluctuations in the numbers but uh i'll rev it up just a little bit just focus on them oxygen sensors and we should see it uh you know drop down drop up kind of fluctuate a bit but if you you know rev the engine a little bit kind of keep the uh, rpm steady you know don't have it fluctuating all over but uh you should see it you know go from rich to lean back to rich so we'll try that here yeah 0.50 back to eight yeah so that's what a um normal oxygen sensor reading looks like you know you rev it up and it goes rich and then it spikes down to lean and then you'll get some fluctuations after because it's kind of tr kind of trying to figure out you know what to do now that it's just back at idle but uh that's what you should see you know from 0.8 to 0.1 back and forth um now for the short and long term fuel trims those are really good if you're having you know like a stalling condition or uh you know it's just running rough or something you look at uh, the short term and you can actually see when I rev it um, it should fluctuate a bit but the long term should really stay the same if you're at one set rpm for you know a long period of time you'll see the long term fuel trims uh, move one way or another but your short term fuel trims are always going to fluctuate a bit so you know I'll just hit the gas real quick see it went pretty close to zero and now they'll go back up a bit I'm sure in a minute but uh as you can see the long-term fuel trims pretty much stayed the same I wasn't staring at them the whole time but they pretty much stayed the same especially the second one but um that's another thing like I said if you have any issues like my oxygen sensor uh, you're not going to go into closed loop and you're just going to be running off your you know factory ECU spec so you're always going to have that same air to fuel ratio which brings me to another thing a lot of people who you know say put on a cold air intake or you know something along those lines they don't understand that your ECU has all these or your engine rather has all these sensors so if you put in a cold air intake, you're thinking, you know, you're getting colder air and you're getting more air. So therefore you're going to have, you know, more power. But that's not the case because, you know, for first off, you just need more fuel to begin with to, you know, get more power. But just for the sake of this, if you put on a cold air intake, your ECU is going to correct the amount of air that's going into the engine. You're not really going to get more. So if you have a vacuum leak and you're getting more air past the mass airflow sensor, you're gonna, you know, see these fuel trims start adding a whole lot of fuel because, you know, it's saying, oh, well, there's unaccounted air, you know, we need more fuel in here. So uh, it might not always do that, then you start, you know, misfiring or stalling out or something. But um, yeah, this is really good to know how to do. I think everybody 
if you have a car should at least know you know the basics on it you don't have to be you know a complete nerd and know everything but uh it's definitely good to to know how to read live data especially like i had a um intake manifold gasket completely shot and uh i looked at the um fuel trims and it was adding a whole bunch of fuel i mean this thing was just pegged rich and uh sure enough you know i grabbed a, a spray bottle just with some soapy water in it sprayed it around the intake and it was bubbling and hissing at me and it actually sealed up a little bit and the fuel trim started to go down so it's definitely good to you know learn how to read this stuff so you know you can fix your own car or maybe at least figure out the problem before you take it to somebody because you know labor is expensive and you know if you don't have to pay somebody that's always great it's how i actually started you know i didn't have a whole lot of money and uh and no one to fix the car so i just learned it myself and just kind of fell in love with it from there and and i just couldn't imagine doing anything else but um like i say you know as far as oxygen sensors versus the fuel trims i think that they both have a significant amount of important or importance you know the oxygen sensor is pretty much telling you you know how much fuel and air you're getting into the engine and the uh, short-term and long-term fuel trims is pretty much just related to the fuel so i hope this helps if you have any other questions just you know leave them in the comments like i said i'll uh, definitely get back to you uh, make sure when you take these readings that your car is fully warmed up your oxygen sensors a lot of them have internal heaters in there to help the oxygen sensor get up to temperature some of them have to go to like four to six hundred degrees before it'll actually you know start reading accurately so if your car is not warmed up you'll have uh, a whole bunch of false readings you might think there's a problem when there really isn't or vice versa so uh you definitely don't want to look at it and think, oh, no, everything's good, but it's really not. So make sure your car is fully warmed up. I like to take it on a drive for, you know, 10, 15 minutes before I even look at any data. Just because, you know, you don't want to be having an oxygen sensor reading, you know, whack and it's really perfectly fine. Or like I said, vice versa. So, like I said, I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um... Uh, one thing I wanted to mention too, uh, if you have a, a short term or long term fuel trim that's reading positive or negative way too high, you know, say it was uh, positive 12, so that means it's adding a whole bunch of fuel. You want to start looking at fueling issues because, or I'm sorry, if it's positive number and it's adding fuel then you want to look at, you know, vacuum leaks or stuff like that. If it's reading negative, then I'd start looking into fuel system issues. Could be an injector, you know, your uh, fuel pressure regulator might be getting stuck up or something like that. I get that question a lot, you know, if my fuel trims are reading, uh, you know, 11 positive, what does that mean? Or 11 negative, what does that mean? So, like I say, you know, if it's positive, it's adding fuel. If it's negative, it's taking fuel away. And, you know, if you're having a fueling issue, it's not going to take fuel away. There's going to be more demand for fuel. So just hope that clears that up a little bit. I really appreciate all the support. Um, I don't have, you know, a whole lot of subscribers or not, but I appreciate every single one of you. And uh, if you have any additional questions, comments, just let me know. Uh, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. But let me know, you know, what you didn't like about the video so I can do better. Um, yeah, I just started this not too long ago, so I'm still kind of, you know, getting used to everything. But I really like giving people good information. It's really hard to find good information out there. And, uh, you know, if you're finding somebody who's not reading these correctly, then you're not learning anything either. So, uh, but I hope this helps. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will have another video posted in a few days as some, uh, real good car work i think you guys will enjoy it so stay tuned for that check back soon and thank you for watching